Hi, my name is Dieter Vermeulen. I'm a Technical Sales Specialist AEC for Computational Design and Engineering at Autodesk. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a fire exit risk assessment on a BIM model by automating the creation of escape routes in Revit with Dynamo. Within this architectural Revit model, I want to create an evacuation plan at the entry level between the room exit doors and some indicated emergency exits. And as we see, there are a few floor plans created already. The first one is called circulation area. And this plan view is representing all the rooms that are modeled inside the entry level. Now, each of the rooms has its own properties. Like if we select this type of room, then we can see that the uh, property called department has a value circulation. This whole orange colored area is representing then the circulation area, which will be used for analyzing the shortest route between a room exit and a evacuation exit. Each door also has a specific value for a project parameter called exit type. And the normal exits from each room have the value room exit, and there are four fire exits or emergency exits in this building, indicated by the value emergency exit. So this was the first one, this is the second one, and over here we have a third one, and then this is the last one. Now the goal of this Dynamo script that I'm going to show you is to find the shortest route between each of these doors and the nearest emergency exit. At the end of the script, we will see the escape routes drawn on this specific view in a specific line type. Now the line type has already been defined with a dedicated line style. And this line style is called evacuation path. Okay, let's start by opening Dynamo. And open up this script. Now, as you can see, the script is built on this Dynamo version and this Revit version. Now, before you run the script yourself, you need to install two packages. One is called Lunchbox for Dynamo, and the other one is called Archilab. You can find them in the catalog in here. Archilab, and then over here we have Lunchbox. Now, the packages can be installed from within this dialog. You search for a package, type in the name, for instance, Lunchbox. And there we have the one that needs to be installed, which can be done by clicking on this arrow. Now later I will show you which types of custom nodes have been used from these two packages. Let's first have a look on the total overview of the script. As you can see, it consists of a few groups indicated with specific colors, and these colors are indicating um, which type of operation is done inside of this Dynamo script. The gray ones are specifically for input, the blue ones are for Revit operations, the green ones are for creation of uh, geometry inside of Dynamo, the orange ones is for analyzing that geometry, and then the pink one is the one which is specifically performing the uh, shortest root definition. Now let's have a look on the first part of this script. Which is important from the very start of the script is of course your element input. What we know is that we want to find all the elements at entry level as we defined already at the start of this project. And the rooms will be the one that will be defining the circulation areas. The doors are the ones that need to be analyzed to find the shortest uh, route. And then walls, curtain panels and stairs in this case are obstacles. If we start the script already for the first time, as you will see, some nodes have been frozen uh, further on in the project or further on in the script, and they will be unfrozen uh, as soon as we progress in the uh, total script. At this part of the script, we are going to collect all the elements at level 01, entry level. These elements return the category they belong to. Now, uh, 
as all the elements are collected, we also get all the categories. And these categories need to be filtered. So when we detect a string from each category name and then compare them with the list that has been created with all the obstacles, then we can find the elements that are belonging to that level and that are acting as an obstacle. At the end, they are joined also with the elements that are from the category stairs. Now, these stairs are not necessarily belonging to a specific level. They could also belong to a level below and act as a multi-story stair. Now, once we got them all into that specific list, as we can see in here, we get all the rooms at level one, we get all the doors at level one, all the walls that are based at that level one, and then also the curtain panels and the stairs. Now, first, what can we do with these rooms? If you go a little bit up on the script, we see a long way uh, to get into some kind of analysis surface definition. The thing is that all these rooms have their own room finish boundaries or room boundaries in general. And these room boundaries are creating that specific surface that need to be analyzed. Now, in my case in here, I want to merge all these surfaces into one big poly surface, which will make it easier to perform the analysis further on. So let's start by unfreezing this first node and run the first part of the script already. And there we go. The first thing we can see in here is that the room surfaces contain also these small circles. Now, these small circles are caused by columns that are also working inside of the boundaries uh, of that room. They are indicated as room bounding elements. Now, we want to filter these guys out of it so that we have just a rectangular or a polygonal shape instead of all these small ones because these shouldn't be analyzed. Actually, these are obstacles that could be added up front in the script. So to perform that, to find that, um, to, f to do that filtering, we are going to detect the room area. So we know that there are seven rooms that are specifically indicated as circulation rooms. Now, these circulation rooms have been filtered out in here by finding their specific parameter value for the department parameter. And then if we go further on, these are the surface areas of all the surfaces that are indicated in here. So actually, we have 22. This is the seven room surfaces that we have, plus also the ones coming from these small column elements. So to filter them out, we are going to find only the surfaces which have a area which is greater or equal than the ones that are indicated from the real room areas. And then perform again a list filter so that we end up with a total surface which is a single unique surface. So let's switch off these guys and also this one. So as we can see now, this is one single object which will be used further on in the analysis. The second thing we have to do to prepare this whole script or to prepare the analysis is find the obstacles. So the obstacles this placeholder here is connected with that list that we created a little bit uh, earlier with the walls, curtain panels, and the stairs. So if you unfreeze it and then run the script again, then we'll see that this will taking all it will take all the solids that are cutting a plane at a specific value. In this case, we take a plane at level two meter so that we don't take all the elements which are at a higher level inside that model. Now, at the end, we will union all these solids so that we still have a single object which is representing the total obstacle solid shape of that building. There we go. So as you can see, walls, stairs, and curtain panels are indicated in here. We also see that some walls are quite big. But this is because the model has been created that way that a wall could uh, get from a entry level until the roof level, for instance. So the lower and upper boundaries were set like that. Now, the next step, 
that we have to do in here is to um, perform a meshing on that analysis surface. What we will need later on in the script is an analysis grid. That analysis grid will be used to find the shortest route. The analysis grid will be defined by a Delaunay triangulation of that specific polysurface with a given set of UV parameters. Up front in the script, you will find a slider that will define the number of UV parameters that will be used. There we go. The limitation in here yet is that the Delaunay triangulation is created on the bounding box of that polysurface. So it generates more meshes, more lines, in fact, than we actually need. This can be resolved easily by intersecting the Delaunay triangulation with the actual analysis surface. And this will return the lines that are only on that surface. Okay, let's unfreeze that node and run the script another time to see what the results are for this part. So this has taken some time to get into that result. And if we switch off the preview of the full Delaunay triangulation and only show the ones that are intersecting the analysis surface, then this is the result we get in here. Now there are still some concerns because there are also some obstacles which are placed on top of that or which are going through even um, that analysis surface through that meshing. So we need also to find a intersection between the analysis grid and the obstacles. So this is done by uh, finding the intersection between that uh, just generated analysis grid and that previous a solid we have created. So we will filter them in here again and then switch off this preview so that we end up with the final analysis preview. So run the script again and there we go. Now we have an analysis grid which is smaller than the previous one which you can compare in here. So in here we have like more than 3800 elements over there we have still 3200 elements. So 600 of them have been uh, eliminated because they are intersecting the solid from uh, the obstacles. The next step in this uh, process is finding the start and end point of each route that has to be defined. And the elements that are defining these start and end points are in fact the doors. So let's unfreeze the doors and while we run the script, the script will take all the doors uh, that are defined previously, so the doors that are um, entered at level 01 entry level, and it will filter them by its exit type parameter. So it will find the ones that are equal to room exit and the ones that are equal to emergency exit. Now the room exit ones will be used as starting point, emergency exit will be used as end points. Now to find their start and end points, we could take their location point, which is the insertion point of a specific door in the Revit model, but curtain panels or curtain wall doors don't have any insertion points. So we are using another method to find these points by taking their solids, union the solids per door and then find the centroid of it and let's project that center to that surface, to that analysis surface so that we have a valid path which is at the same level as the analysis surface. So this way we get the points of the room exit doors and the points of the emergency exit doors which can be visualized by creating this line. So this line is actually the the path that is defining start and end point, and these will be used for further analysis. So all has been prepared now. We got our analysis surface meshing, and we got our escape route initialization. Now the next step is the most important step, of course, in this whole process, and this is finding the shortest route. Now, um, let's unfreeze the analysis grid. What it will do now in this case, it will define the length of each of these small elements of each of these lengths, uh, of each of these curves at least. 
and we should also maybe switch off the global paths so this won't mess up our view then now one of the nodes of the lunchbox package is called curves.shortestwalk now this specific node will define the shortest route between a start and end point from a path which is defined previously uh, between the doors and it will perform that analysis on a curve network so this curve network is actually a list of um, curves that have been defined in my case here by the Delaunay triangulation so if we run it it will take the analysis grid into this placeholder and then feed the shortest walk node with all of these values and it will return us um, a specific route so let's run so there we are now the analysis has returned a few results the results from the shortest walk node actually are showing four polycurves for each starting point so for each exit door and the polycurves are representing the shortest route between that door and each of the four indicated emergency doors so this means that we need one more analysis on these four curves and we need to find the shortest curve for each door so at the end we will end up with for each door one polycurve representing the path between the exit door and the emergency exit and this can be visualized now in our dynamo model so we should switch off the analysis grid that we have a better view now these are the shortest routes one thing that stands out in here is the jaggy shape of each of these polycurves and we want to create a path a route that looks a little bit more smooth so to get to that result we could take the small segments of each of these bigger polycurves and take their first point and then their resulting endpoints and combine them into a NURBS curve node which will result into a more fluent design of that line the final step in the script is to visualize the shortest routes with detail curves inside of our dedicated Revit view and on top of that we also want to use a specific line style which was created initially before we started with the dynamo script now this line style is in this case called evacuation path and with a custom node called get line style by name from the Archilab package we can get the reference to that line style from within Revit and then apply it to the parameters of each of the created detail lines inside of the model So if you run the script for last time, then we get this as a result in the specific Revit view. You could also switch off the Revit background preview so that we don't see the Dynamo objects inside of that Revit view. And then you see these nice red lines indicating the escape routes for each of the selected doors.